All right, just a quick one. Um, doing this bubbling squeak recipe uh, uh, by request by Joan Strine. Okay, uh, thanks, Joan, and here we go. All right, bubbling squeak. Right, um, this is a traditional uh, English dish in the south of England. It's generally used as a breakfast item. Uh, in the north of England, Midlands and north of England, it's generally used as a tea time um, meal. So that's uh, tea time, some would say dinner, um, but it's generally an early evening meal. And um, I'm going to deviate ever so slightly from this recipe because I have, I, I've perfected it over time and just given it a little bit more um, pizzazz so to speak um, it's made up of leftovers we got leftover cooked potato and we've got some leftover cabbage with some carrot in it now the the cabbage and the carrot uh, are not uh, the carrots not terribly important but the cabbage is so this is principally a dish of white or cooked cabbage white or green cabbage or savoy cabbage cooked with leftover potatoes all right now in the olden days we would have mashed up the potatoes and then shredded up the cabbage and mixed it all in by hand but fortunately these days we've got these super duper um food processors processors um i've also got some spring onion and the spring onion is the additional pizzazz um, those of you who, who know and enjoy spring onions will love this addition and you won't do it any other way thereafter I promise all right so then we can get in a few potatoes you want about half and half balance between the potatoes and the cabbage so uh, let's just get a bit of that into there as well so let's do that that way so you can see what's well, you still can't see what's going on there you go but anyway, that's a half and half balance between cabbage and potato. And don't forget we've got the spring onion in there. Um, additionally, you'll need some oil for frying and you'll need to get your pan hot. So I'm just going to take that away and whiz it, save you the noise. All right, I've got all that whizzed up. Um, there's still some lumps in it, which is uh, actually quite desirable. So we, d we don't really need to uh, worry too much about that. And what I'll do is I'll tip that out into the bowl and if you're doing it in batches you, you can just do a second batch with what's left over there uh, I'll probably save that that's left in the two bowls now for uh, for tomorrow um, get all that out and so now we've got the mashed up potato we've got the chopped up vegetables and there's still some nice chunky bits of potato in there because that's quite nice uh, I had to take my pan off the heat because it was getting too hot while I was chopping all this up so make sure there's no massive lumps in there you can have small lumps in there and then there's another addition that I'm going to put in that all right I'm going to add some gram flour into that now you can use any type of um, or you can use all-purpose flour you can use lentil flour um, but gram flour and lentil flour will give you the best flavor in the end uh, I'm just going to put in one two tablespoons of that in there and then I'm going to mix that in mix that in nicely and that will stiffen it up a little bit and it also it will also make it um, fry up nicely so here we go so we get the pan on the heat that's already quite hot get some oil in it enough oil to coat the bottom and then we literally dollop that in there right I'm going to turn that into three 
three lumps as you see there and let's get that off the spatula mm. it's good right now we can concentrate on that okay so we started frying it you want to fry it over a, a medium to high heat and every now and again you need to give it a turn and I warn you bubble and sweet is not an easy thing to fry and it has a nasty habit of breaking apart but what you want to do is you want to get this crust on it because that's where the flavour is but don't let it burn so this is why we just keep turning it that's the important thing by now you'll have worked out that this is not the most elegant dish on the planet but I can assure you the taste is awesome it really does taste good don't worry if it breaks up as you cook it that's perfectly all right And the reason it was called bubble and squeak is because the cabbage had a tendency to squeak as it was as it was cooking, as it was frying. See these brown bits you see there? That's where all the taste goes. Gorgeous. Right, that's pretty close to being done. I um, just want to brown it a little bit more and then I'll be happy and we'll show you the finished dish okay there we have it that's um, a rather elegant little plate not but <laughs> it doesn't look too elegant but it tastes great I'm going to serve that up uh, with some whole grain uh, Dijon mustard um, the meat you see there is some leftover cold leftover pork this is particularly goes really nice with the cold leftovers and there's some Bramley apple sauce I get out of a jar and that goes particularly well with the pork and there you go that's a really nice plate of food and you see the crispy bits on the all mixed in with the bubble and squeak and that uh, is a very tasty meal I have to tell you all right enjoy If you have enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to follow my channel please subscribe and be sure to click the bell icon to receive notification of all my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.